I am Alex Mag, part of the Call to Action crew, and I'm going to be reacting to one of the most anticipated matches of the entire year, of the entire Schmodown fucking history. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm so excited. I'm so psyched. I can't wait. I just finished watching the Emily Rose Jacobson versus Alex Damon match, and it's it was so good. It was a great match. I'm also really, really curious about the upcoming matches. Now, if you haven't seen that match, you know, definitely check it out for sure. Um, I would definitely just wait, um, wait till you see that. So you see, obviously, any kind of reaction, obviously. But I'm not going to go into any spoilers about that. Going into this match, I'm going to kind of tell you what I expect, what I'm hoping to see. Um, but also what I think the end results will be. So what I expect to see, I expect to see obviously a really great match. These competitors individually going into the history a little bit is that Dern, Dan, sorry, Dern, <laughs> Dan Merle is one of the greatest competitors we've ever seen in Shmodan. He is arguably the best competitor we've ever seen. Singles, um, singles and teams. He's annihilated. He's so fantastic in so many different ways. So him going into this match feels like a no-brainer. It feels like a no-brainer that he's doing so great. If he doesn't do great, that's when we're like, oh, this is weird, right? He's been so good for so long. At least since he really came back from, um, since his like bounce back, you know, after his loss against Guy forever, I feel like forever and a year ago. Now, that aside, uh, going into this match, what I expect from, from him, you know, obviously everything's great and everything, but the conversation between, you know, Ben and Merle is really interesting. Is that Ben is going to be considered one of the best rivalries for Dan Merle in his history. It's kind of weird to think that, and as far as like it's a conversation of talking about Dan Merle, you know, how amazing he is and all these different ways he has, how he's uh, he's done so well in so many different groups and everything that Ben Bateman is just going to be a chapter almost in his story, which is really weird to say um, because Ben Bateman's is such an amazing competitor. He's one of the best competitors we've ever seen. His he, talk about a Cinderella story. He started out being part of Team Action. Hey, Team Action, what's up? <laughs> By the way, he started out as Team Action being considered the not great at, part of Team Action at the time. You know, Andrew Guy was considered the really good competitor, and things have changed. Obviously, now. Now going into, as he kind of progressed and he, you know, it kind of hit him and he's like, hey, I really want to take this seriously. I want to take this to the next level. He started, you know, gaining more momentum. He started doing better in singles and teams. And, you know, unfortunately when the Civil War happened, I don't, still not emotionally ready. I don't want to talk about it. Not ready. Anyway, um, you know, actually on that, I'm just going to. I can go more. Can't work it. <laughs> so that's how much I've drank so far in last match. <laughs> I've eaten. No worries. It's all good. I've eaten food during this process. Heads up. Um, but Ben Bateman's had such an interesting career as a competitor. He's done amazing in singles especially in the past like two, three seasons. He's done amazing in teams, being part of Who's the Boss as well as Team Action. And I cannot wait for him going into this next season as like a fully realized, amazing competitor. Not to say that he wasn't last season. However, he really came into his own as a competitor, you know, in promos, you know, his, um, his, he's like, hey, I don't need an amazing manager in order to ace in order to ace this, in order to win these matches. I just need myself in order to win these matches. Now, if I have a really great manager on my, on my back, awesome. I can do that. That's going to be even, you know, it's going to make even better. But that being said, I don't need them. I like them, but I don't need them. Now, 
in this season, again, a fully realized competitor. And he's uh, he's doing amazing. He's actively studying. He knocked it out of the park. Him and for being him and Riley being part of who's the the boss really they went up to the you know went up to the finals for the for the team's tournament last season same for the family that one actually was just a tad bit higher just saying just saying um but it's really i don't want to say emotional going into this match because they're such good faction mates um but at the same time there's such I feel like it, they're so good together. Like, I feel like a lot of those strengths and weaknesses really balance, balance each other out. So it's like, um, Mar Bateman is what Merle was when he was in his prime. Not to say, I mean, he still is in his, he's in his prime now, but he, Bateman is now what Merle was when he won the singles belt for the second time, where he seemed completely unbeatable where he seemed on another fucking level. Now, going into this again, what I'm expecting is that I'm kind, I'm really, I'm expecting obviously a great match and everything. I'm really kind of curious about how the whole manager Roka is going to be with Merle. What's going to be, I mean, is that, you know, really going to be with Bateman? I don't know. Not entirely. I'm like, it's kind of weird. Um, I'm kind of curious about that. Especially, I just watched the backstage backstage episode earlier today. I'm like, came home from work with Roxy and Ben called in once um, a little bit. Roxy, Roca, and Dagnino, and that was a really <laughs> interesting listen in going into this one. Um, so that's I, I feel like it's so like in my head actively <laughs> while watching these matches, you know, like watching Roxy and everything do her thing. The same for Doug, you know, obviously. So I'm really kind of curious to see how this is going to go out, the interactions between the teams, because at the end of the day, no matter what, it's the belt still going to be in the Finstock exchange, which I'm not excited for. But that doesn't matter. It really doesn't. At the end of the day, I'm just excited for whoever wins this to, I would just want it to be a great match. I wanted them to earn it. I just, I don't want it to be another situation where it's where an easy match. I want it to be a great match. I want it to be a match that's worthy of the singles champion. It's what we deserve. It's what they deserve. That's something that's just going to be forgotten. Anxious, very anxious. Let's go to it. match so far now the thing is even though these are two respected members of their own faction on the fence stock yes both ben Bateman and dan Merle, it as roxy had alluded to before it has not been peace and harmony in the fence stock exchange there has been some arguing about who was going to manage at one point dagnino said nobody's going to manage he made that official and then because he didn't tell any of his players and they said no we didn't know about that he's like oh you know what it's not official now Roca will be managing the end yeah, and, and Ben wasn't a big fan of that. Said a lot about it on backstage, so there was some turmoil. But and, but and it looks at like Dagnino. Is there was some tension. But what happened? It just seems like now it's kind of all smoothed out. It's weird. I have no idea, and that's one of the many fun aspects of this match. Which, like you said, championship match, five rounds. To quote Tarzan songwriter Phil Collins, "I can feel it coming in the air tonight." Do 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 Whenever I hear that song, I think of the American Psycho version from the American Psycho uh, musical. And I think of that version of that, of that song, and I love it. I can feel it coming in tonight. It's really great. You should check it out if you can. Look at what Ben Bateman has been doing. Ben yes. Bateman was a 500 player at one point last year. He has yeah. gone on to win 
five straight victories. His last Amazing. three by knockout. He is on a tear right now. He is on a tear that we haven't seen like no other. It's very similar to what like Sam Levine had done at one point. You went on a nice run like that one time. Yeah, but this is a whole different league. And now. Ben, Ben had a broken <laughs> at back. one time. What do we broke his back? And it's true. They both. The two of them though. The way that they play. Let's see. I don't know if you you can in here. No, I can hear it. Yes, no, no matter what. It's just the sizing each other up, listening to the way that they've been strategizing. There we go. Not talking to each other with certain about certain things, listening to each other's interviews, pick up little things. Both of these guys know each other so well because Bateman managed Merle when he won the in in New York in the earlier in the season. So I wonder if he's gonna use that against them. I wonder if there's I'm really hoping there's gonna be a challenge issues. In this match, um, I feel like challenges have really been taken up to the next level, and they're used much more strategically than before um, for many reasons other than to question the answer, <laughs> essentially, of another competitor. So. Yes. Well, not yet. We need to find out who the belt is. We need to find out exactly how we got here, and boy, was it a story in general. You ready to get hyped? Eric? Rodriguez, boy! I feel like any ice cubes in this, but my ice cubes from earlier melted. Back in 2016. Oh my gosh. Look at that. He's the first person ever go to 12 victories, eight knockouts. He's an absolute legend in the game. Maybe the greatest player in Schmo Down. Yes, the absolute greatest player in Schmo fucking down. There's a lot of people that want that belt. And I think now's the perfect time to give all of them a shot at My advice would be that if you are carrying that belt on your shoulder, maybe take a look over the other shoulder because one day I might be able to. There's a lot of pretenders in this league. New teams come out of the woodwork, but it doesn't ah! matter. Oh my gosh, I miss my people. Damn. Come on, Dave. What happened to you? Brian, get your guy out of here. Thanks for having me. Nothing to respect for that guy. Real champion right there. I miss my family. I miss my parents. I miss my dad. <laughs> I put my faith in a friend that wasn't a friend at all. This guy didn't have my back. I'm a changed man. For two years, I approached this game the wrong way. I didn't respect the game. And it turned to the game did not Dapper fella, sweet baby Jesus. Oh my gosh, Oyama, underrated fucking player. Why is no one talking about him? It's annoying. It's ridiculous. It's bonkers. Is he wearing skinny satin pants in that one? It just occurred to me. Man, those are short shorts, man. But he does have a nice pair of gams, so you know. Whammy. Oh gosh. Listen, I don't know who did it. Was it Jacob? I don't know who fucking did that post, but I want it framed on my fucking wall right now. Speaking of which, cat, where are you at? Buddy? Buddy? No? Oh, now I, I get it. You don't want it to hang out now? Yeah, you're right. You lick your paw. What is it? Let's. 
Now, I do want to have a conversation, a video, like I was thinking dedicated to who or what needs to be on, sorry, who deserves to be on the Mount Rushmore of Schmodown. So the top four competitors of all time across the board. Um, is that something you guys would want to hear? If, if yay, please comment. If nay, please comment. I mean, it could be a shitty idea, and I wouldn't know unless you told me. I feel like a, I think it feels like a dapper idea, but if y'all don't think so, please let me know, because I can come up with some shitty ideas sometimes. Wow! Wow! I mean, can you feel the hype, ladies and gentlemen? Are you ready for this match? I can. I am. Wow. I can't wait yeah. for it. They're pumped. They're ready to go. You know, I see that promo. The one thought in my mind is... Like all that hype is actually just from the call to action. <laughs> action army in the corner. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's like probably it. Oh, I see how it is, buddy. Yeah. I gave you food right before recording. I don't know what the fuck you want. We have fresh water. We have fresh food. What do you want? You want belly rubs? Because you are not getting it right now. No, you're not. So only the winner will receive points. Only the winner will receive points. That is going to happen throughout the entire league. That is part of the decision in general. The managers have been. Uh, told about this, and so the players. So only the winning player will win points for their match. History on the line here tonight, Christian. We're about to meet the competitors. We're getting ready to go. The seatbelts are buckled. The tray table's up right. You ready? Pumped. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time Bye. for the movie trivia Shmoda. Five rounds. Four. Five fucking rounds, man. my fucking pen it's while i'm drinking it's right now a good time to play i don't care the challenger representing the finstock exchange led to the david b what's up his team partner the outlaw john roca with the record where my people at where my people at I wonder if he's gonna like go away and like run to the back of the, of the auditorium so he can like emerge with, you know, uh, Bateman as well. And what's kind of weird to think about is that although this is Bateman's defending title match, it's really weird to think that Dan Merle is the undercard in anything whatsoever. <laughs> I'm really curious to see how he's gonna do in IG in particular. Um, because I can't really picture him doing bad in anything. <laughs> like, I've seen him do, like, good, but not great. I mean, like, who doesn't have that shit every once in a while? Okay. Um, oh, speaking of which, I have this, um, I was just thinking that Dan Merle doesn't have a t-shirt. Why the fuck does he not have a t-shirt? He has, like, a new Merle Order t-shirt. Um, do people wear it, though? I don't know anyone that actually wears that t-shirt. Oh. I feel like he needs another shirt. What's up? Like Roca has like five shirts. Merle, however, what's the flippity fuck? Where's his shirts? Hmm. 
Now the other thing, the other thing. I wish they had all had mics. Just saying. Oh gosh, did he change? What is that outfit? What is that outfit? Cat, what the fuck do you want? We're not getting you alcohol. That shit's expensive. If it's expensive, that's mine. Body. What's up with you? Is Lucas over there? Ooh! Oh, there's Belford! There's Mike! There's, oh, oh, there's Brad. Oh, oh crap, I didn't see Lucas. Damn! Now, if you didn't know, Lucas is my husband. He's down there in Atlanta. And I'm so fucking jealous he's down there right now. I'm so distraught. I'm so distraught. Now, it's really weird. Again, this is really weird to think that Bateman is, this is his, like his first season where he's really, he's um, very self-aware as a competitor. He's not only just self-aware, but everyone knows he's a good competitor versus last time he's more of an up and coming good competitor. He's like, everyone's like, wow, okay, he's doing good. But is he great? We don't know. Now we know he's a great competitor. He's, um, in the conversation for some of the best strategic competitors there are. And he's wearing a scarf. What's up with so, that? Why is he wearing a scarf? What's with the scarf? The champion, the champion is it hot? Champion I mean, sorry, is it cold over there? What's that? The champion said the challenger. I don't like how they're talking about the scarf. <laughs> and, oh, wait. So, wait, Dagnino. Oh, Dagnino is taking, Dagnino is taking the mic. Dagnino is taking the mic. Oh, okay, okay. Let's see what happens. What? Oh, wait. Here we go. What a tangled web we weave here. Tangled web we weave. This is a win-win situation. Oh, I know. It's really rough for you, isn't it? Look, what you're getting here is the creme de la creme. You're getting two of the best players that ever played this game. Ever? I don't know about that. I can picture Roka being like, bitch, what? They go, do you think this is going to be the biggest match of all time? I go, you're goddamn right it is. <laughs> Gosh darn it, yeah. The GOAT against the current GOAT. Let's see what happens. At the end of the day, it's so That's, it. right. <laughs> That's what he's saying. At the end of the day, guys. I don't care. It's still mine. That's all that matters. <laughs> Rook is like, man, I wish I was competing because this sounds fun. For those loves the mic. Understand English, Christian Harloff said there'd be no promos. 
once again, we got a communication issue in the Finstock Exchange. As Tom just did a promo for his boy. Pull him the um, is there a little... That's cute. I like that. I got nothing but love for Ben Bateman. He's earned his shot. He earned it and he took care of business and won that title. I know what that feels like. I know what it's like to be on a journey coming down from where the lowest you can be and get to the top mm -hmm. of the pile. Mm -hmm. Roka's pro I my my personal definitely man, top competitors. Richard. My personal like top five competitors of all time. Ooh, yeah, like probably number two or three. But tonight in Atlanta, Hotlanta. Or there you say you are taking on the greatest of all time, <laughs> the GOAT. The man who wins championships like you eat breakfast, which means it happens every day. Oh gosh, breakfast food. He is the Probably. best of all time to do Can it. Can we just talk about breakfast food for a minute? Prove it to everyone. Yo. Including you, Ben. You gotta learn where you belong in the pecking order, my man. <sighs> ben yeah. has never Tom, that's it. Scratch that, you know, I'm gonna rephrase. That's enough out of you. Dan has that's never lost a live match. Clearly has no issue strategizing under the lights. He has no issue competing under pressure. Neither does Bateman as well. But that being said, he doesn't – he's lost under the lights, though. But that was like a different time where he was a completely different competitor. I'm going to drink some more. You look at Dan Merle, you think Steven Spielberg movies, and you also think classics. He can go in the way I of really the Bateman, wish I could show you my cat right now. They both know a lot about each and every category on that wheel. Because my cat is like opponent. begging for attention, well, and I don't want to give my cat attention, but same time I do. You know what that's Let's start doing, then like. with the rules of round number one. There's five rounds for the championship. So how do the rules for round number one work? Gentlemen, it is a five-round match. It is the championship match. However, round number one plays like a normal round one in the movie trivia showdown singles division. Eight questions from eight different corners of movie trivia showdown know-how. He knows it's like a monologue, no bitch. There is no stealing in round number one. You each have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the, again, Five round match. Make sure you heard a question right. You want to buy yourself some time? Use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be issued at any point throughout the match. Each and every question in round number one will be about the movie First Man. <laughs> I haven't right, seen well, that movie. Start with the champion. Are you ready? Whatever happens, the exchange walks out with the belt. So, all right, I'm ready. We ask the actor. I ask really want to. Are you ready? Break in. Belt. I really want someone to fix off bin stock exchange to be unhappy because otherwise it'd be they're just a little too compliant with each other, a little too happy, and I don't like it. And to the crowd, please, please, for the love of God, don't say the answer. Yes. All right. I just beg you. Here we go. Round number one. Question number one. Action adventure. Who directed the 90s action film Face Off? <laughs> I just don't want him to say the answer. If there's the occasional, oh, right. then we can. That's all right. Reaction. We can live with that. Five, four, three, two, one. Heads down. Bateman. We got John Woo. That's correct. And Sir John Woo. <laughs> Is he a Sir John Woo? Well done. Well done. Well done. Prompt, prompting the uh, the champion to maybe challenge that. Uh, like what he's doing there. All right. Well, John Woo, knighted by the Queen. You can have this one, Dan. <laughs> All, right. All right, gentlemen. Your next question, your second in round number one, comes in the world of comic book movies. Oh. In the film Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Scott Pilgrim not with us tonight, but watching from home. In Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, how many total evil exes Seven. must Scott defeat? Or was it? Got any, uh, I think it was seven. Not on air. Save that for SCN Live. I think it was seven. <laughs> Five. I could be wrong. I could four, be right. I can't remember. Three, it's been a while since I've seen two, that movie. One, but I do remember Chris Evans yep. yes, sir. being ben. great. Seven. 
Tie game. Yeah. Fuck right. yeah, seven. All right, dramas, dramas. What 2018 historical drama stars Emma Stone, Rachel Weisz, and a Lincoln? Thank you very much. Oh, oh, which one call it? Which one call it? Um, the favorite. The favorite. Down and Ben. And the favorite. Yes. Whammy! The favorites. I still haven't seen that movie though. I really need All to. Right. They both got the U in there. So far, so good. 3 3 on both Dan and Merle. Who will strike first? All right, go. gentlemen. And a reminder to the crowd if uh, both gentlemen or either one gets all eight questions right in round number one, there will be a bonus question also worth one point. Uh, category four is in the world of famous actors and actresses, people with bigger bank accounts than the guy talking right now. And your question, what actor played the real-life individuals, Jim Lovell, Richard Phillips, and Walt Disney? Uh, name is Bert. Tom Hanks. Oh, my buddy Doug. Oh, back in 2000. Awesome. Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. Famous actors and actresses, the question, what actor played the real-life individuals, Jim Lovell, Richard Phillips, and Walt Disney? Yeah, Tom Hanks. Mm. I'm sure there's a candle version of this somewhere. Apples and bourbon. No, it's not pizza. I wish I had... I think he is a lord. I think I should... A chimichanga. I have Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is correct. There you go. Tom Hanks, boy. Maybe Ani just woke up. Yes, a chimichanga. All right. Fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. Which actress stars as a character called the Major in 2017's Ghost in the Shell? Somebody's watching this match. That's how rumors get started. Scarlett Johansson. Five. You know Marilyn Manson. Four. Was in the Wonder Years. Yeah. Three. Two. What's with the gerbil? One. Pence. You never heard of it. Uh, Pence down. What are you doing? Oh come on! They didn't know the song. No. Pence down. And I never Pence saw down. this actually. And Scarlett Johansson. Yes. And okay. Scarlett Good guesstimate. Down. Good guesstimate. <laughs> Considering that's like the only person I know in that movie. Next question. Your oh, next question no. comes in the world of comedies. It would be pretty awesome if I got a chimichanga delivered. No? Yeah, you beat me over the head with this thing. Okay. Right, okay, I tried. What spoof movie franchise had the installments The Smell of Fear and The Final Insult? Good question. Oh, um... Um, scary movie? So you're gonna miss me when I'm gone. Nah. I'm gonna go with and scary now, movie franchise. Start with Dan. The Naked Gun. Yes, sir. And oh. Matt didn't have it. Didn't have I it. Haven't seen any of them. It's on my list, man. Merle it's on my list. So many movies I have to see in order to prep Merle my competitors. Right. It's a work in progress, guys. An active Smash. work in progress. I'm trying to watch a new movie every day. Like in the background or just actively watching it. Um, oh, shoot. What's her name? I'd recognize there it. Was, there was three eyed Johnny down the street. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, and Ben. And Claire Foy. Yes. There. From the Queen. That's Dan it. Merle has not missed. Dan Merle. Fucking A. Fucking A. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Are they training Finn stuff? No, I always wondered why we didn't do every match like this. <laughs> 
Just People are animals. Four what do you think, Darren? What are we starting? You can't, you can't do this. Says seven to six. That's the accurate score. And Darren has a razor's edge. <laughs> so far, Danny, one more question to get a perfect round number one. Ben trails by only a point. And your last question in round number one comes from the world of animated movies. And your query is, what film features such characters as Oogie Boogie and the clown with the tearaway face? Oh, um, um, oh, what should we call it? Uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Clown with the tearaway face. Mr. Oogie Boogie. Um, oh gosh, those are my favorite songs. It's <sighs> a great one. I would love to see Nightmare Before Christmas somehow incorporated into like a Broadway show. Yes, and didn't have it. Didn't have it. Ooh. Oh. That's, so That's a big one. Okay. Dan Six and eight. Sweet baby Jesus. Now to go up by three. And he hits this. Bonus question. Which 80s action film is known for this line? Come out to the coast. We'll get together. Have a few laughs. That's what uh, the fuck what kind of question is that? Die hard. That is correct. One more point. Dan Merle is up nine. I've seen the movie in full one time. One and time. And a three-point lead for the former champion over the current champion. <laughs> Hannah, so strong he broke the table. Now, now wait a minute. How? Wait, 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 wait. How do you guys? Out of everything you've been set up, everything, how do you not say you had one job and the whole night? All right. All right. Uh, so now we get to round number two, Mark. It is chaotic. It is awesome. What is round number two? Round number two is the wheel round, as Brandon so generously donated his wheel from home. Ben, Dan, you each get a spin at the wheel. Please spin from the wheel and not the pegs on that wheel you're eventually going to settle on. I'll spin category. your pegs. It contains four what? of movie yeah. trivia, showdown, and know-how. I'm sorry. Each question is worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. There is stealing in round number two. Uh, if you're not sure of the answer, ask us multiple choice. We'll give you the <laughs> correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes what? to one. That was uh, a ben surprise. Ben is currently holding the belt. However, you find yourself trailing by three to Dan Earl. So, Dan, the choice is yours. Would you like to spin first or defer to your belted and scarred oh, opponent? God. I will uh, defer. I'm gonna defer to the champion. Ben Babin spin. Now the champion is always the to fucking fur, man. The fucking fur. Now, the fur. Now remember, the champion has the opportunity to put opponents and spinners on there. Ben has done that. What is that? What is that? What is that? Is I don't know what this is. Spinning it again. Spin Spinning fucking it again. again. Okay. Spin for world too. So yeah. Now remember, also Dan Earl tonight trying to become the only the second player in history with a double belted. With singles and singles and team. Currently owns a team belt. He has a team founding fathers. Here's the spin by Bateman. And we're at, what is it? Nora <laughs> Ephron. Ephron. Oh, okay. Please give me movies Nora that are movies penned are by Nora Ephron. Because I want Nora Ephron Nora scripted Ephron, movies as Nora well Ephron. as Nora Ephron directed ready, ready. movies. All ready. All right, here we go. Ben, first question. Nora Ephron directed which movie based on a 16? 60s TV sitcom starring Nicole Kidman and Will Ferrell. Oh, um, Bewitched. Bewitched, yeah. All right. Question number two. Question number two. Nora Ephron wrote the screen. I didn't know she did that movie, though. What famous comedian plays a mobster who moves to New York? Wait, what? Steve Martin. Yes. Dave and Jensen. All right. We worked together a handful of times, yeah. Question number Good guy. three. What performer stars in the Nora Ephron films Michael and Lucky Numbers? What the fuck? John Travolta. That's correct. The kid knows his Ephron. All right. And last question. Which actress? 
starts as a single mom turned stand-up comic in Nora Ephron's directorial debut. This is my life. Um. Um. Five, four, three, two. Julie Kavner. Two points. Wow. No clue who that is. No fucking clue. I like what you did there. I like what you did there. Wow. Good acting. Holy fuck. That's a hard category. So it, it does seem like it is not like only directed, John, but champion, also scripted. So that's good to know. He, he took it and he ran with it. Great round. But now the former champ and the team's champion, Dan Merle, it is his time to spin. Only down by five. All right, Dan, go ahead, Dan. Here comes Merle. Big, it was a big round by Baby. That's a huge round. It was a great round by him. Oh. Dan Merle. Smith. All looking at it. John Roker will be telling it us is. the category. Anne Hathaway. Gonna keep it. He's gonna keep All it. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Gonna okay. keep Hathaway. It's gonna right. be a hard one, I'm not gonna lie. Dan Merle, four questions in the world of Anne Hathaway. Each one for two points. Your first, Anne Hathaway co-stars okay, with this. Julie Andrews in what 2001 Disney family film? Um, Ellen Enchanted. Two points. Right. Oh. Dan makes it 14-11. 14-11. All right, your next question. In the film Colossal, a giant monster inexplicably attacks what Asian country? Korea. Hathaway's character gets from. Who's faking it? He's faking it. He's faking it. He's faking it. Five. Four. Is it A, Japan? B, China, or not? Oh, no. C, Vietnam, yeah, right. Or D, South Korea? That is incorrect, but I'm going to give you your four options again. Korea, motherfucker! A, Japan, B, China, C, Vietnam, or D, South Korea? China. Looking for South Korea. They were in Seoul, man. Bruh. They even needed that one point. They even needed Bruh. a three-point match in favor of Ben Bateman. Dan Merle, two questions left. Pen ultimate Anne Hathaway question. Anne Hathaway appears in The Dark Knight Rises and what other film from director Christopher Nolan? Oh. Yes, it is. All right. All right. So Dan right now can go up by one. He can go up by one here if he hits this question. Great math on your part, Christian, and we're ready to go. All right. Sorry. Here we go. The last Anne Hathaway question. Hard categories, they really are. Question is, New categories as well. I love it. What is the title of the song that Fantine, Anne Hathaway's character, famously sings during her moment of despair? It's not I Dream a Dream, it's not. Um, I Dream a Dream. I Dream a Dream. I Dream a Dream. Do sing the song again? It's the rough. Round works like this. The wheel once again, because Brandon Hanna loves being on stage. It's going to be placed on that table. Oh. And so the competitor that is currently in the lead is okay. going to be spinning that wheel one more time. Hopefully a little keep getting here. notifications on Discord, so I need to calm yes, that shit down. A question in that genre is going to be What's up? Both competitors. What Once is fucking up? Each competitor is going to wager an amount of points. They can wager as many as three points. They can wager as little as zero points. If they get the question correct, they gain that many points. If they get the question wrong, they lose that many points. All right. Today betting round is always up. iffy. I, I'm, give it a spin. I respect the betting round for what it can do. What 
Um, there we go. It just, now, this was a it's, it's difficult either way. That is on the wheel. So if it hits a bonus choice, Ben can choose. He gets to choose yeah. which category he wants. And the category is? Opponent's choice. <laughs> that's exactly choice. why he did it. That's exactly why he did it. The strategy paid off. That's exactly why he did it. So he put it on there. He put a bonus choice. And it shows where the game of Chip of Bateman came in. I can't imagine the pressure that Bateman must feel at that time, at that moment, at this moment, really, it's, he's already a competitor that puts a lot of pressure on himself in order to do well, you know, but on top of this being part of this group that's has a lot, a lot of winners, oh shit, Tyler Perry, Jesus. Tyler Perry wow. movies. Tyler wow. Perry movies, please write your points. Okay, man, I got okay. it. I got it. That's your number. Okay. Got it. I got it. Got it. All right. Oh, wait. You can, uh, you just give me a. Probably betting that he knows it just a little bit better, yeah. but he probably. Gotcha. All right. Recognizes that he right. probably doesn't know it as well we all that much. That's all right. Which? Which? Sorry. Sorry. Who? All right, in the film, Daddy's Little Girls, Gabrielle Union okay. is a lawyer who falls in love with a single dad played by Idris Elba. What is his blue-collar profession? Um, Carpenter? Again, like round one, we'll ask them for their answer. You have 15 seconds to think of it, and then write it down. Five, four. To repeat the question, okay? And Daddy's Little Girls. This is your category, man. Plays a lawyer who falls in love with a single dad, played by Idris Elba. What is his profession? One. And it's time to start with Dan. How many points? Zero. And. Construction worker? Incorrect, but you don't lose any points. You chose how many points? Three. And you said? Mechanic. That's correct. <gasps> oh, it was huge. Wow. Huge. Oh, well done, Bateman. Well fucking done. Massive. But, however, brilliant strategy on Merle yep. to bet nothing. Merle bet nothing, and it didn't hurt him. It was the smart play. Yeah. Bateman just happened to pull one out of his hat. Brilliant, brilliant play by Merle. Bet nothing, and he's only down by two. As a player. And but also a little warning to everyone else. Hey, Bateman's right. like, hey, guys, so everyone two, that's watching, three, I've been setting now. up on Tyler Perry. Round, Mark. How's that? Oh, boy. That's why he's letting everyone know right now. round is upon us. In just a second, I'm going to but over to fantastic. That was kick-ass in every single way. The question is asked. Five questions in total. As soon as the question is asked, a competitor may buzz in. Once I say your name, you have exactly two seconds to answer the question correctly. If you get the question right within the two seconds, you get a point. If you miss the question or you do not answer correctly within the two-second time limit, you lose a point. And now I will take off my headset, turn into a home shopping network host, and walk on over in between these two great players. Oh, and sweet Jesus. That's exactly what we thought it would be. Oh, and it's back, and forth, back and forth. First round, Merle takes the lead. Second round, Merle keeps the lead. Third round, Bateman takes the lead. So we're going into the speed. He's round. wearing some kind of guy, purpley red. Okay. Maroon. Awesome. You ready? So, shirt, sure, and ready. I'm here for it, man. How you guys feeling so far? It's the match we thought it would be. Oh man, I'm loving the speed round. I'm loving this fucking speed round. Now, are speed round questions usually like first round questions? Are they usually? I, it's all just based on who gets it first. Um, or are they kind of vary like first, like first round, third round kind of questions? I'm not entirely sure. Remember, wait. Five questions. Remember that we have uh, waiting for Ellis to call out your name before you answer. Oh, 
We baby Jesus. Okay. All right, Mark. Yeah, we'll do a quick little two test. All right, here we go. All right. What color is John Outlaw's hat? Black. You gotta wait for Noah's <laughs> All right. Jokes on you. Where did it's that in the back? At least it looks yeah. sad, like. Where did Dan Merle go to FSU? I'll do it again. I'll do it again. <laughs> I'll do it again. Turns green, I get gold. I'll, I'll do it again. Is that the Gators? What, what? All right, here. You got it. This is just for Dan. It's just for Dan. We'll do something a little harder. Just a little harder. What is Steven Spielberg? Hey, Shh. hey. Can, I need to, can I, thank you. I appreciate you something a little. I want to hear Chris. Do something a little hard. What is Steven Spielberg's first name? Steven. Thank you. All right. Here we go. All right. So it's up and working. Mark, are you ready? You good? All right. So Ben, are you ready? Oh yeah. All right, Danny, you ready? Ellis, yeah. Wait for Ellis to say your name before. It doesn't matter if it lights up green. Let Ellis call you up. And then you have two seconds after Ellis says your name. Here we go. Question one. Which actress is the lead in the rom com 27 Dresses? Catherine Heigl. 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 Ah! Oh, Grace and Anatomy. Right. Son of a bitch. Mm. Which MCU film received a best picture? Infinity War. Correct. Lose a point. Lose a point. 17. Black Panther was the answer. Cool. Question three. You directed the 2019. Us. Jordan Peele. Yes. There you go. There we go. Question four. In what year were the comedies Anchorman and Doctor Who? 2004. Yes. Whammy! Holy shit. Bayman might be taking this home. Who plays Grossman? The chief rival. John Cusack's character. And Aykroyd. One more point. I mean, excuse me. Fuck ben yes. Ben Bateman, four out of five. Four out of five. Finds himself now at a five point lead. Five point lead over. Ben okay, ben now I'm cheering because not so much that I'm anti Merle. I feel like he's amazing. He's an amazing competitor and everything. It's just that. So team action, I, man. I a lot of Bateman, team regardless, team you know. Sorry, Lucas is calling me. Lucas. 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 Hey, I'm recording right now live. I am recording right now live. Say hi to everyone for me and give kisses and hugs to everyone for me. But I'm recording right now. Not live, but I'm recording everyone. I don't know who this is. Who is this? Is this who is this? Who is this? I'm recording. The camera is on me while I'm picking up the phone. So hi. Apparently, everyone says the fuck. Okay. All right. Love you, babe. I'll talk to you soon. Uh, nice I'll talk to you soon. Five point lead, so you can give us your three lucky numbers first. What you got? <laughs> go I can't wait to finish this match because I'm literally just finished the speed round of Marl vs. Bateman. Bye. Love you. Bye. Au revoir. Eight sixteen and one. Eight sixteen and one. Priorities, Dan. guys. This right, match Dan. is takes precedence. Dan's gonna go first and try to avoid the KO here. He's gonna go with excuse me, category eight. Category eight for Dan. Category eight, four movies. Ooh, movies. hard category. Two pointer. Who is who stars as the lead, Anthony Swafford, in the war film Jarhead? Oh, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal. Two points for Dan Merle. All right. So to tie the game here. To tie the game, he has now gotten to category 16. That's his three pointer. That is his three pointer. And then his 70s pointer. 70s pointer. Dan, who 
star as Detective Hercules Hercules Poirot. Poirot, excuse me. Poirot. 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 Hercules Poirot. Sidney Lumet, 1974 adaptation of Murder on the Orient Express. Oh. Albert Finney. Tie game. Tie game. All right. I've but never seen game that game movie, and I haven't seen the new one with Benji, Benji. Kenneth Branagh either. I'm told I need, now, to, see, I need to see it. Dizzy ben Ridley is in it. That ben ballet ben dancer ben from ben Russia ben is in it. Ben Michelle Pfeiffer, Johnny Depp, a whole bunch of people is in it. So, it's definitely, three. again, on my list. To action uh, you need that? Okay. Yeah. 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 Here we go. And your question for two points. Who plays in the world of action adventure? What is the subtitle of the 2003 sequel to Charlie's Angels? Full throttle. Five. The subtitle. Full throttle. Two points. All right. Thank you, Cole. So here is where we stand. Beeswax. Dan Merle has a five pointer. It's the five pointer, and it goes back to the camp. However, if he misses, Ben Bateman will remain the movie trivia showdown champion. Dan, rom coms. Rom coms. Come on, Bateman. Michael Sarah and Kat Denning starred. 2008 Peter Salette rom com of two strangers, Gilbert Reed Vance. Oh, come on, Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist! Son of a. Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. Yes, it is. Um, has a really great soundtrack, just saying. Three points. Now separate Dan Merle. From Ben Bateman. Ben Bateman still has his three pointer, yes. so he could tie it. Could but tie even it. if he misses this question, he can win it outright with the five point yeah. left right. All right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So, Dan, so excuse me, Ben Bateman. Ben Bateman now. There we go. Two questions remain. Ben, uh, for your three point question, nice that can tie. I'm starting to think this apple Earl. Jimmy Bean is not a good idea. Yeah. So sweet. Seven. Joe Bison, the same time, so drinkable. And your question. Who stars as an aging Broadway actress named Margot Channing in the Academy Award winning film All About Eve? It's either Joan Crawford or Bette Davis, I think. I'm going to go with Bette Davis. Three, two, Betty Davis? Betty Davis. Tie game. Tie game. Is it bet? Is it B E T T E? Okay. Is that bet or Betty? All right. So we are exactly where we thought we would be. A tie game with a five pointer that could decide it all. If Ben Bateman hits it, he remains the champion. If he misses, we go to sudden death. The five point question mark. It's a scenario that is not unlikely, Christian. Yep. Uh, ben Bateman went it outright in regulation and retained that beautiful belt he has adorning his podium. Our game. You selected number Your 17. beautiful belt. And Doug Williams is number corresponds to Judd Apatow <laughs> movies. Judd Apatow movies. And your question. Oh, John Apatow. Okay, that's heavyweight. got his strength. So, so John Apatow written and produced film Heavyweights. What is the name of the Tony Curtis's nope. new head counselor who is from, quote, far away? What the fuck kind of question is that? In the Judd Apatow written and produced heavyweights. In the Judd Apatow written and produced heavyweights, what is the name of the Tony Perkins's new head counselor who is from, quote, far away? Mm. 
Never seen it. Five, never heard of it. Four, three, I want nothing two, of it. Jazz. And we go to sudden death. <sighs> It's oh my gosh, it's 25 to 20 fucking five, man! Exactly uh, you we went to air and predicted overtime. No. It is three slowdown. It was Lars. Lars was the answer. All right. Lars. Entertainment. What kind of fucking name is Lars anyway? Unless you're Northern European. Otherwise, I'm like, what kind of fucking name is Lars? All right, see. All right. Gentlemen. All right. Take my positive energy. All right, guys. And so so your body and you Gentlemen, sudden death on. feels a little bit like round number one. We're going to gonna ask you a question. You write down your best attempt at an answer. You have 15 seconds to do you so. Got this, you got this. You got Each this. Each question's worth a point. No pun intended. This is a question. This. Here's where it gets tricky. If both of you miss it, we move to the next question. If both of you get it right, we move to the next question. If one of you gets it right and one of you gets it wrong, the person who got it right is the winner of the match. Also, also, both Dan and Ben, you both reset. You both have one JTE rule for sudden death. One JTE. Remaining. Oh, shit. Lars. 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 No. Uh. All right, here we go, guys. We asked the champion, are you ready? Oh, yeah. Challenge, are you ready? Oh, yeah. Oh, go. yeah. All right, question one. Question one. Angelina Jolie. No, we don't. It's not. It's not death. We just skipped the question. Yep. Angelina Jolie stars in which... 2014. Maleficent. What's the record? Oh, I think this is like round one questions. This is a whole bunch of round one questions. I'm going to start playing lips to get a nervousness. Starred opposite Charlie Sheen in the 1990 comedy Men at Work. Never heard of. Round five, four, three, two. Repeat question. Last one. Who co-starred opposite Charlie Sheen in the 1990 comedy? Not cute, right? Not cute. Never seen it. I'm gonna guess Sigourney Weaver because I've never seen the movie, and it's one. Ben. Steve Gutenberg and Dan Merle. Emilio Estevez. And your winner and new movie trivia showdown. I wonder if this is going to be the, you know what, give me a minute, I'm going to need a minute to process this. Belted and going into IG like and he does, he fuck. What only Jesus. I hope done. he's powerlifting all he's those weights. He's like carrying all the time. Jesus. Jesus. 
has held that belt four times. Christian, it was an epic match between two epic competitors. And now only the real question is, how's Brad Gilmore going to do this post game? He's going to talk to all of them. So Brad Gilmore's going to get in there. What were, what were Roca? What were Roca's like, like bitch, scoot over. <laughs> it's my spot. We have Brad the champ. Gilmore with one of the greatest title matches I think we've seen in a long time. That was a great fucking match. It's so rare to have a singles match go to... 20s, let oh, alone 26, 27. So like, sweet baby Jesus. Jesus. That was great. Now, let me start with Bobby Gucci, Vince Stock. I mean, it was a win for you either way. You're managing Vin Bateman in this. What are your thoughts right now after that incredible match? Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, he was going to her. Not entertained. I, I mean, look, I said this. I said this. I said this a long time ago. Never seen anybody play like this before. These guys are so good on so many different levels. I mean, Van with the speed round, incredible stuff. I mean, Jesus, you know. And then you know, and uh, you know, Dan, uh, Dan with the, the the wherewithal to bet nothing on the Tyler Perry to save him. Man. He bets one point there, he's toast. They know that. And that's a, that's a, that's a kudos to John John Rocco over there as well. What the exchange is doing here? Look, we're family. I, I couldn't be more proud of Dan here right now. This, this is fantastic. And, I, and I, I, no slight to Ben either. This guy was incredible. He was down three points in the first round, came back storming on a, a Nora Efron, whatever her name is. Uh, you know, I mean, any, 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 any cleared the, any cleared the category. Man, look, we're the best. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. I think it's time for water. Let, me go, let me go to Ben Bateman. Excuse me, Tom. Let me go to Ben Bateman. Ben. You walked in here very confident. Of course, you're coming off a legendary role, uh, run last last season. You came in here. This was your first title defense. I know that after going down in that first round, down mm. three, Dan goes perfect, gets the bonus. But then you I'm spin, distraught spin, right spin now. I'm happy about the distraught. Get the in same that round, opponent's choice. You go that was Tyler such a good match. Round, like, and you ended up hitting it. Fuck. Just walk me through what your game plan was and, and where you think it went wrong. I mean, uh, <sighs> every round is competitive. Tyler Perry fan. I've seen every Tyler Perry movie, and uh, I just, uh, you know, that was that. That felt like a, easy for me, so I was, I was glad to do that. Smart of him to, to put zero on there. Um, and in the final round, you know, we see, we see it happen. You describe a movie, or you get a question about a character, it happens in every match. It is what it is. It's, it's happened to be on either side, so uh, had a tough call. I didn't get it, and uh, I think it's it's pretty clear. You know, Dan is one of the most knowledgeable players that's ever played it, so it's a match higher than anything. That's why I got the advantage. Makes sense. But uh, I felt so good about this match. I it played well. I was happy to win the way that it did. It was definitely the greatest match I think we've all seen. Yeah. No fucking joke, greatest match we've fucking seen. Jesus. You worked you work so hard to get to this point. I know that you want to climb back up that championship mountain. We have free for all here next month. Uh, you know, that's a possibility for you opportunity again. I mean, where's Ben Bateman go from here? I think I just keep fighting. I mean, uh, when people talk about these guys over here as the greatest of all time, and you know, people have lost and won, so if you want to get on another level, you have to. You know, okay. That's what I'm doing. So, I'm not getting greatest of all time. It's take a little longer. So. Just a bump of the road. Ben Bateman, everybody, the former champion. Oh, God. Hardy called the former champion. <laughs> So awful. Ladies so, and gentlemen, for the, to the gut, time, dude. Your singles champion, dangerous the former Dan champion. Rowe. Now the singles champion. Not saying he's that he's not deserving. Yeah. He obviously I deserves. Did. It's just. Oh. Mmm. Wonderful job, Dan. Oh my gosh. Damn well. Speak to Jesus. Perry looked like a man throwing you off, and then you got you got obliterated in that speed round, but you're able to come back, go into sudden death. I mean, just walk me through your thoughts. I mean, I knew I was in big trouble going into round four. I knew Ben had every capability, and he did uh, a run in that speed round. I think it'd be very possible that I would come out of that not having the connection point that exactly would have. So I knew uh, going into that that I was in trouble. Team Street. Team Street. I, 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 really, 
I think I've got a thick water bottle because <laughs> the only way that I it has to be some VHS box in the back of my head with Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez on it that got stuck in my head somewhere because because when he said Steve Gutenberg in my head I was like yeah it could be I I, I mean so um, that's just uh, this is not it takes two to tango and this is a little help dance we got here tonight. <laughs> I was there when you won the championship for the third time in Brooklyn. That crowd was chanting, you deserve it. I mean, everyone here, the crowd was split, but everyone's happy to see you back on top of the, of the movie trivia showdown. But what does this mean to you for winning for a fourth time and solidify your place and legacy as the greatest to ever do it? I, uh, I mean, you know, like I, I've always said, the whole with the GOAT debate, like it's not like a presidential election. Like we're not going to have everyone state their case and then there's like a vote. And it's like, okay. Like, um, so I like being in that conversation, but just on a personal level, you know, I have goals in the game. I have mountains that I still want to climb. And like I, what? Uh, fucking mountains. Um, to, okay. You want to, what Sam did, because I never, you want to get to, okay. Where you're at right now is like Sam's so level, but I think cool. you're trying to get to, you can't, know, uh, yeah, but possibly between what you, where you're at now and possibly be a, I was going to ask you that. Well, I mean, hold on, which I, you're the, you're the I feel like it's impossible. Obviously. Having three belts simultaneously here. going into IG is. Are you, you human? Like, like, what? That feels impossible. Is, Please prove me wrong. Please. 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 Please prove me wrong. Please get the belt. But at the same time, I actually I love Spats. I feel like he's such an amazing better. I love him watching him compete in anything, everything. So I I don't want you to beat him. So, so I feel very conflicted. John and I have on our shoulders. So I would be, uh, it would be foolish of me to think that I would be able to just run through and grab another belt. First of all, I haven't played a lick of their game yet. Secondly, True. there's a lot of people after both of these belts, so I'm just going to do the best I can and, and I want to go to John Ruby we'll here in just one happens. second, but we'll one, one, more one, one more question. Okay, so what I want to know from you guys is yeah, the going to this. Is how well do you think, honestly, think that he's going to do in IG in particular? The thing is, he's so amazing in singles and teams, obviously. How does that translate into. IG. We don't get that many competitors and, uh, that can do well I had, I had that really translate well from IG into singles but, and teams. I mean, this is the first that I can think about, honestly, here. other than Kalinowski so, and Kushi. So I'm really kind of curious to see how this is going to turn out. There's been all this, there's been all this you know, noise and whatnot. And that's what but please. Prove me wrong. I love being proven wrong. Um, I love it absolutely. So, if there's something that I'm not getting right, I want to hear about it. I want to know it so I can correct myself. So, communication issues, a faction that has to work some things out rather than a faction that doesn't win, and that's what we do. That's a lot of love for the Gucci and. The Finn Stock Exchange in general, so I respect that. Just real quick, I want to just get That's a word awesome. from John Roca. That was the greatest match we've ever seen, is it not? I have to say, yes. One of the most, I mean, because of the pressure, it's a live event, and it went to sudden death. An okay. incredible match. For us, nah, sitting on the sideline, Tom and I were feasting like crazy because we were so nervous and couldn't do anything. And I'll tell you something, managing Dan is like managing that car, you know, that came out of that Boston car. It parks itself. It's a self baka. It's not a problem at all. I only okay. we really one thing, and that was the uh, that was the uh, one pointer for Tyler Perry when there was a question about us going zero one. I said, "What does your gut say?" He goes zero. I think that's the right choice, zero, because you only have two points. I, I as far as I can remember, I haven't. I don't remember any competitor putting down a zero rather than a or a one, two, or three. I just, I'm sure maybe there is, and I just don't remember it. Um, I'm he human, threw, so shit happens. He threw every obstacle you can get throw in the way of a challenger. He 
put opponent's choice up there. He was like, duh, I got this. You gotta give him props. Clearly. Is it frustrating to be on the other side and play with someone that against someone that intelligent and smart and driven to win? Yes. And that's what makes this victory all the more sweeter because Dan took no shortcuts. Dan just wanted to get in the ring and he just wanted to fight to see who would win. And he was gonna respect it if Ben won. And he's, I hope Ben respects the fact that Dan won. But all that matters is you all won watching the greatest of all time doing it for you live. Hashtag the not news. There will be issues with the Finstock Exchange because when all these egos slam into each other, that's the game. Because we all want gold and we all want belts. Dan said it best. I'd rather be in a cave with a bunch of wild wolves fighting over the meat than some timid wolves sitting over there. Can we play too? No. We come to win. We come to win belts. And one more thing. Oh, when it comes to travel, that's a whole different conversation, but okay. If you fought Damon to the nail, she will be back. And she deserves your respect and your love. But for now, that's the man. She? He's the greatest of all time. Four-time champion. Proud to run along with his side. Wow, you look. And one more thing. God, is he shirtless? Sweet. Oh, like Jesus. One more thing. Dagnino is tattooed on his back. What is going on there? Just pointing that out. Jinx. Jinx. Jinx, Brad Jinx. Um, my goal now is to match with him. He has always been my benchmark in this league. Do what he did. Do what he's done. He's got two belts. I got Paulo Yama in front of him. And then after that, it's Irwin or Snyder. And then if I take care of business, I'd love to have a rematch with the greatest of all time. Oh, yes. But who's going to be your manager, John? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Fifth Stock Exchange and the greatest game ever played. <laughs> Give it up for Ben Bateman. Give it up for Dangerous Dan Merle. Atlanta. A standing ovation and well, well earned. Well My earned on both of those. Well earned. Standing ovation. Here they are, Mark. Well, what do you think? It was Finstock being Finstock for sure, but it was also two of the best that this game has ever seen, two of the best strategists, the best players, the most knowledgeable, and it paid off here today. We certainly hope whoever caught Finstock's shirt gets tested immediately. But overall, when you look at a match that goes into overtime, that gets a standing ovation, that gets yeah. the amount of standing ovations from this crowd, you got to say it's in the conversation for the best match that you and I have ever seen. I mean, it's got to be not kidding. I, mean, it, it I cannot it argue that in the slightest. Oh, well, I hope it lives up to the hype. Except, uh, uh, except of, Cody Hall versus that, uh, Juan Harris. Not a knockout. I hope that you're, you're wondering. Is, are, are these two guys going to show up? And they did. They, they, they the difference between that is that uh, Cody Helper's Lon Harris is so unexpected. They're both rookie competitors and expect they absolutely that, nothing yeah, coming like, from the two. So for them doing like, as well as yeah, they did during their debut match, well, not Cody Hall's match, uh, but couple, uh, couple notes, uh, dance his matches are so sporadic, like, like it feels like a new uh, first match every time he plays. And, uh, <laughs> um, you know, you talk about the, the greatest of all time, you talk about the GOAT, whether it's a competitor that we saw tonight or the match itself, you also got to mention our incredible crew, the greatest of all time, give them a big hand, everybody up at the booth down here, behind the scenes, A plus material, yeah, you got to give... Gotta give props to RB3. Yeah, everybody and to our technical director, our technical director Adam Smith, Cody Hall, Brian Mitchell, Courtney Luby, uh, and Megan Sanborn, and the whole crew, every BC, the entire crew that helped out today, Dwayne, everyone, thank you guys so very much. You, you have totally done exactly. Absolutely. Thank you guys. Thank you for making Atlanta. It was the right call. So thank you guys so much. Really, really happy to do it. What a season we have. And now the question is, what happens at the free-for-all? Because you're going to have... I cannot wait. I'm going to be there at the free-for-all, and it's going to be so fucking amazing. 
it's gonna be great guys if you're gonna be there please give a sh please let me know i would love to hang out with you it would be amazing i love hanging out with you guys it's gonna be so much fun um yeah we like to hang out and go out for drinks and stuff afterwards it's gonna be all out of bag of chips so please let's do it together it's gonna be a very busy season. We're gonna be very busy. Not we're fucking kidding. Free. Um, Editor, being involved in three right different leagues is ridiculous. It's bonkers. Right now, right it's now, damn near impossible. Kalinowski is the closest we've ever. Well, yeah, well actually, let's start that. Kalinowski. Um, before that was Cushing. That from what I can remember, Cushing to me was like the first competitor to try to to really ace doing all three amazing and then Kalinowski and now potentially Dan Merle now that being said if you're going to be going into all three factions as going into the third faction as a champion that's the best way to do it but it's not a guarantee obviously that you're going to ace going into this new faction it definitely like, obviously just gives you that, you that edge. Um, also for everything they've done. Thank you to all of you and really appreciate everything. From it's Mark just Ellis, so Carl different. Ellis, I don't know. Oh, please give us some some kind of extra. A little extra some some. No extra some some some. Okay, so I'm just gonna need a minute to. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. You know what? Bateman won. I'm ecstatic for him. I'm so excited for him that he won this. It's congratulations to Dan Merle. You earned it. It was honestly one of the best matches we've ever seen. And singles history. <laughs> and all of Schmodown history in general. It was amazing. And it was definitely worth every single promotion that was made for in its honor. Now, that being said, it was... Um, I don't know how to describe it. Um, it was definitely a match where I was like, oh my gosh, it was, it's so good in so many different ways. Um, every single, every single individual section was great. The first, this first second round was amazing. Holy crap. In the, in the betting round, the strategy behind everything is fantastic. You know, third round, speed round. I was like, holy shit, payman has got this in the bag. And then, the final run, I was like, is this actually happening? What the flippity fuck? What is going fucking on? Um, and now that being said, I am so excited for Merle. It's, it's so weird. Again, uh, like I said, I said earlier, it's, I have a hard time computing the thought process that Merle being ever being an underdog in any way, especially when it comes to singles. Um, there's so many great competitors and everything out there in general, but he just has it in the bag. He's so great. And him going up against Bateman, obviously, I feel like I'm, I'm going to have to go back and rewatch a handful of his uh, the the championship matches he went up against, you know, against Merle and then, sorry, Merle against uh, Roka and then Roka against Riley. I'm, I kind of want to go back and watch a bunch of uh, singles matches to kind of compare and contrast. Um, I'm just really, overall, really happy for them. For him, for the group, I mean, there's there seems such like a really obvious camaraderie between the group, which is I feel like very 
difficult to find amongst a group of people. And, you know, I'm just so excited for them to really kind of have that together. I am a little sad for Bateman losing it, unfortunately. And that sucks, you know, being able, working so hard for so long in order to do so well. And he's do, he did it so consistently only to lose it so quickly. So I'm excited for him going into this, this season in the singles tournament here in the fall for him to ace it, he's going to do so well. He's going to be up to the semi tournaments and sorry, the semi, uh, semi finals and finals, you know, clearly whoever he, regardless of who he can go up against Bibbs. And I'm like, I love Bibbs, but Bateman, I mean, Bateman, come on now. <laughs> you know, so, um, I'm really excited for him, Bateman, coming up here in the new season. I'm excited for him to be part of the Hoots of Boss and really ace it. So, um, but damn, Earl, congratulations. That was amazing. Being part of the Founding Fathers, you're going to be fantastic in a million different ways. I cannot wait for you to start blasting through inner geekdom. I'm really curious to see when your first match is going to be and who it's going to be up against with because I feel so bad at for who your your first competitor is going to be. Can you imagine like a debut match between Robert Parker and Dan Merle? Can you imagine what that first match is going to be like? No pressure, kid. You're going to be you're going to be going up against this multi champion champion. I'm sorry, this multi belt holding champion is that I guess the tri- correct title. I um, I guess, um, for inner geekdom and like, don't pressure, but that's your rookie match. Your first, very first introductory match. Like, Oh God, sweet baby Jesus. I'd be like, I don't want no more. That would be literally me. I'd be pulling a golem in a minute. (laughs) That would be totally me. Now, Regardless, I'm really excited. It's fantastic. It's it's gonna be so good. Um, I'm really excited for everyone involved. Now, um, I'm really hoping for the next coming match. It's gonna be really interesting. I'm excited to see what the next few matches are gonna be coming up with. We're not gonna see any singles matches coming up for a while until I figure close to the end of the year when we kind of wrap up the singles tournament. And I think that the singles tournament starts sometime in like late summer, early fall. I'm kind of curious to see when that starts. So that's kind of up in the air. But we're just going to wrap things up over here. I'm Alex Mack, part of the Call to Action crew here with Call to Action. And I do a whole bunch of stuff. I actually personally run Schmobates every Wednesday at 930 Central. Um, I actually host Schmobates. So it's a Schmobate, uh, sorry, it's a Schmodan theme debate show where we really argue, where the competitors really argue some of Schmodan's greatest like questions, like um, best uh, belt match of all time, which the match we just watched was actually be like totally the answer of that case. Um, another one would be like best, um, best, um, team, best team of all time, best IG match of all time, you know, things like that. But also we're going to get into some weird questions as well. Like what competitor would be the best uh, competitor or best Schmodown personality to have as your uh, food fight champion or to where, which one would be the best competitor or Schmodown com- or Shmoda personality to go on a road trip with. So we ask some really weird questions as well. So it's really actually really fun being part of that. So if you're into that kind of answering those weird questions, kind of being part of that process, um, please participate and vote and that'd be a whole fun. We do that every Friday at, sorry, not Friday, but on Wednesday at 9.30 Central. I'm here in St. Louis, so Central is my time zone. Um, but also we have a lot of other shows like Shm- uh, such as chilled action, call the fan links, call live, triple A, you know, a bunch of stuff. So please stay tuned and check out some of our other channels as well. We really, really appreciate that. I also um, run the call to action Twitter page. So definitely add, uh, check us out and follow us at call to action pod over there and like and subscribe here on this channel. We, we would really appreciate that. 
you're on YouTube. But yeah, thank you so much. I'm Alex Matt, part of the Cold Action Crew. Salute, and we'll see you soon.